What's up, Cyberspace? It's Zero from the Ranger Eye Club. The Pondium Syndicate, the Data Crew, coming through with that new new, because you know how I do. With another episode of his Pouch Dump feature inside again this week, because it's cold. And I had a really shitty week, and I had a septic swimming pool in my backyard, so we ain't going outside this week. So I hope you're ready for a Pouch Dump filled with copper gear, because that's pretty much what is in this pouch, copper and micarta. I've got a sick new flashlight that I'm hyped to show you this week. The M-Star Noctacon D4 V2 in solid copper. I got E312A LEDs, dual channel, tent ramping coming for your face. So get your eyeballs ready because it's time for Patch Me Outside. I've got some brand new patches that are fucking hilarious. This is the new Pondium Syndicate Fuck You Swear Wolf patches. <laughs> Charlie, you crack me up, dude. Uh, we've got a pair of Pocket Peak Reapers, the old configuration from last week that I showed off, and the brand new one that you guys said didn't exist. There it is, it exists. I've got a trio of pentagrams from EDC Booze, and two collab bone pentagrams from the Him and Corgi crew. We've got the Crow Gear Copper Elemental Patch, as well as Pondium's Cart Sniper, because that is me. Run EDC, because you know how it goes, and the Happy Pocket Co. Doom Floppy, because Mike is my buddy. I appreciate you, dude. So let's take a peek at what's in the pouch this week. Da -da -da -da. So one of the things I want to note about this, like this is a pretty, it's it's kind of thin for how much junk I got in my trunk this week. But I want you to take note at the way that I have this laid out and the way that the mighty pouch works. You'll notice that I've got stuff on this side here, but a big gap that perfectly aligns with where the flashlight sits on the other side. So maybe I should show it from this way. So you can really see that the flashlight takes that space on the front half where there's nothing there. Um, over on this side over here, we've got our fidget toy in one little pocket, the curator flex up here in the back, you can push that down as far as you want, pen and nail clippers over here with the knife, stuff in the back, but generally speaking, that's the setup in the pouch. You gotta kinda make room for stuff on either side, depending on how much space and what size gear you got in it. It's like a puzzle every day when you try and put stuff in your pouch. Which way does it fit? kind of half the fun, right? Picking the ranger eye patches, picking the gear, looking thematic, taking pictures, making videos, having fun. So, inside the pouch this week, we've got quite a selection of cool looking gear for you. Let's start with the knife. This is one of my all-time favorite knives. This is the Giant Mouse Ace Clyde in natural linen micarta with a Plague Justin Coke collaboration Zer Blasted Sacred Terror Skull. Uh, double snake knot paracord. It's called Kingdom from Board Paracord. This guy's got some nice orange anodized accents on the back spacer and the thumb stud. And of course, these lovely natural linen micarta scales. This knife is a saber grind. It's super slicey. I love this blade shape. Uh, very, very good air goes on this knife. It feels good in the hand. I almost can't tell there's a pocket clip in this. It's on washer, so it's not exactly drop shutty, but it is very smooth, and deployment is whew, very nice, very nice. It's one of those knives that you easily can just sit here and fidget with all the time, even with it not gravity shutting on its own the whole time. So yes, the Natural Linen Micarta Edition Giant Mouse Knives Ace Clyde. I just have a thing for Micarta. I don't know what it is. The stuff just gets me going. Up next in this episode, the Big Eye Design Mini Pen in Brass. This is a very small, pocket pouch friendly pen that is just exactly big enough to hold in your hand. Uh, this counterbalance lanyard thing, I don't know if that's all that's cracked up to be, but it does make it easier to get it in and out of the pouch. It's a nice little pen that doesn't take up much space in my pouch. These are the Three Swords Beauty Nail Clippers with the One-Eyed Ghost Granite 3D printed Ghost Bead. It's always good to have a little set of these on you at any time. You get a hangnail, get that urge to bite your nails, just nip it right off and don't even worry about that. On the Fidget Toy Game this week, 
just like last week, I'm still flexing. This is my orange JRW Gear Curator Flex. This is a flexible PVC plastic version of his Curator Worry coin thing, pocket art. Uh, I like these flexes a lot for a few reasons. They've got like a stress ball kind of sensation to them. Like, you don't really get that with a lot of pocket trash. Um, most of it's metal, so that's kind of cool. It works as a good barrier in your pouch to add a little bit of protection between the, the gear, and it just looks cool. I, I've almost given up hope on getting a metal curator, because this is how it is. Up next, the grill from my last video. This is the Lauti EDC Shuffle. This is a brass and copper pocket aces edition. This is a slider fidget toy that clicks or is silent depending on how you deal with it. I really dig this thing. This is one of those little toys that just, it, it feels good in the hand, the sound is good, just everything about it is pleasing both aesthetically and just physically about this. Um, I have a real thing for copper, like the metal itself, and it just, this combo really did it for me. Uh, a lot of people say it's not cool to put copper and brass together. I think those people are fools. I think it looks great. I don't know what they're talking about. So yeah, this is the Lauti EDC Shuffle Fidget Toy. And finally, what you have been waiting for this whole video, the Noctagon, or actually, this is the Amistar D4V2 in solid copper. I'm rocking this with the 18350 um, shorty tube for uh, a smaller pocket carry. I've got amber lights in the thumb, and right now I'm rocking the amber secondary LEDs on the outside. This guy has a little bit of engraving. I don't know if you can see that on the back, but it has the tiniest of lanyard holes. I'm gonna have to get some micro cord. I got some micro cord, so I'm gonna have to make a different style of lanyard for this. Not exactly sure how that's gonna work out, but you know me, something will happen eventually. So I kind of want to show this flashlight off, but it's not dark out yet, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens. But. This little dude is cool. Uh, this is big for me. I, I want to show it off with some of my other flashlights. Here's the D4 V2 next to my Raylite Pineapple Mini, next to my Prometheus Lights Beta QR. These are all three copper lights. The two on the right are double A battery lights, these two. And then this is an 18350 or 18650, depending on which tube you use, light. But yeah, uh, <laughs> quite the footprint difference for those who are curious. Uh, fits in the mighty pouch, fits in the pocket, I have no trouble with it. My son really likes these secondaries. Uh, you can set them into a whole bunch of different modes. I've been putting them on the like rainbow mode at night and using it as like a faux night light in his room when we lay down. It's been pretty cool. Uh, I've been having lots of fun with this on dog walks, even though I don't necessarily need it. I live in the city and there's a lot of lights. I cannot wait to take this thing out into the woods. This is actually a Hank light. What that means is, sure, this flashlight is made by MSR, Noctagon, or whatever the D4V2 makers company name is this week, but this has actually been put together by Hank Wang of International Outdoor. Uh, link in the description below. You pick which finish you want, which LEDs you want, which in my case I chose a mix of the E21A 2000K and 65000K LEDs for that super tint ramping from one end all the way to the other. Uh, mix and match whatever LED temperatures you want and Hank will put them in this little guy for you and send it your way. Lead times are long, it's from China, but it did make it, it really came, uh, no problem, no shipping blips, it took as long as it said it was going to as well too in the description, but it takes a minute to get here from China with logistics and all that. All right, so here's a dark section of my room, and let's turn the light on to its absolute lowest moonlight setting right here. You can see I've got some movie posters, my keyboard over here. Now let's just ramp the brightness up. You can see we've got some pretty nice spread right here. So let's go to turbo. Nice. Now, it has a memory in advanced UI, which is what I'm in right now, that remembers what brightness you were at. So let's do some tint ramping. We can mix between the two LEDs. So you can see the LEDs switching to the more hot LED here. Now we'll switch back to the cooler one. 
Nice little transition. You hit to that bump at the end where it flashes like that, and once you get that ramp to come back, it'll give you what it thinks is the best temperature. Right here, you can see that that's a nice mix here. So let's turn the brightness down and see if we can see these LEDs. All right, so you can see the two different LED sets here now. So we transition to the hotter color, or transition back to the cooler color. You can see that eventually the other set of LEDs will go out. If we jump to turbo, oh, you get completely blinded by 3,000 lumens. All right, so let's see if we can see these secondary LEDs now. You can see here we are switching between the different available LED modes. Red, orange, green, blue, purple, pink, mixed white, rainbow, party mode, strobe mode, and then back to the original colors again. Very cool. It's nice that you can configure that however you like it for your light as well, too. To do another little comparison with some different flashlights. One, two, three. This is my Prometheus Lights Beta QR in its max, I think, 80 lumens. Here is my Nightcore Tiki in its max 300 lumens. And then once again, the Amistar D4 V2 in its max 3,000 lumens. And I actually had to adjust my camera to even capture it. Good stuff. on this jacket since I was like 16 years old. It is just like an amalgamation of biker patches, horror patches, satanic patches, skulls, just things that generally interest me, uh, covered in, let's face it, white zombie-esque stuff. Because I saw Rob Zombie's jacket like this back in the 1990s and I thought, oh my goodness, that's my style. I have got to have that look. And you can't buy a jacket like this. You gotta make it yourself, so. My mom taught me how to use the sewing machine and hand stitch, and here we are. So, ranger eye patches are not the only kind of patches I do. I love embroidered patches, I love velcro patches, I love patches of all kinds. Like I said, this jacket is totally inspired by Rob Zombie, and believe it or not, I've got a Rob Zombie poster with said jacket in this room. I've got a Rob Zombie poster with this jacket on in this room. The same one that was on my wall when I was a teenager. Oh yes, that is the pouch dump episode for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I always enjoy making these videos. If you did, give me a like. It doesn't cost you anything. You just press that little button down there. It helps me out algorithmically in making these YouTube videos and being featured more around this platform. Uh, if you want to subscribe to my videos, that'll be rad too. Click my face down there and do that and get notifications for when I upload new videos. And if you want to see more of my videos right to this minute, click one of these boxes that are appearing around my face as I play with my new flashlight. Uh, if no one has told you today, you are an awesome person and you deserve praise and love like everybody else in this world. So I said it to you now. Someone told you. Have yourselves a wonderful day. I will see you next week or sooner in the next episode of my vlog. Later.